Hi, it's Karen Stewart. Let's talk divorce. Today I just finished a road bike ride up Pyramid Lake, which is one of the most beautiful areas in Jasper National Park in Alberta. Behind me is a beautiful mountain and um, you can see that it is almost entirely red. The trees, the pine trees have just been completely infiltrated from the pine beetles, so super sad. But there's also some beautiful things still about Jasper, obviously. And one of the things here is it's known for its log cabins. And it has um, some of the most beautiful log cabins in the world. In fact, Jasper Park Lodge is considered one of the largest log cabins. So as you go around Jasper, you'll see beautiful um, log cabins everywhere. So amazing place and so excited to be here and watch people out uh, with their families enjoying the lake and, and hiking and riding. Today, we're going to have fun and we're going to talk about when do you know you're ready to start dating again? So you're in the process of divorce and you've been separated for a while and you're starting to think about the future, both with excitement and with apprehension. And maybe one of the things you're thinking about is dating. Am I going to spend the rest of my life with somebody that I'm going to find, that I'm going to love to be with? Or maybe you don't want to. Maybe you're done with relationships. Regardless of where you're at, if you are going to choose to start dating again, which can ultimately lead to relationship, which can lead to love, then you want to make sure that you're ready. I had clients that came into my office a number of years ago. We'll call them Jack and Jill. And they convinced, they convinced each other and themselves that they were over each other. They weren't divorced yet. Uh, they uh, were still in the process of figuring out things around the kids and they had done a pretty good job. And they had both agreed that they were done with each other and ready to move on to start dating again. So Jill went out and started dating again. And what I will tell you is what could have been a very smooth transitioning, transition and decision making turned into chaos and a fight that ended up lasting way too long because of that word jealousy. Sometimes we think we're ready to move on and we're not. And so that is my number one above all rule. You have to be divorced, in my opinion, before you start dating again. Of course, you do what you want. I'm just saying that would be my number one advice. So what is the equation then? What's the equation to know whether I'm not, I'm ready for love, if I'm ready for a new relationship. First and foremost is time. Have you taken the time to heal from your relationship? Uh, it's really, really important. And I already talked about how I personally believe you should not start dating until you're until you're actually finally divorced. A friend of mine uh, has a fun story. Uh, a number of years ago when he was going through a divorce, his counselor advised him to take three years before he started dating. And he to this day brags that he actually didn't start dating until after two. Um, but he's thankful for that because uh, for you to be attractive to that great other person, you've got to enjoy being with yourself. You've got to know yourself. So take the time. Um, time there is no replacement for time to heal. Uh, so please do take the time. The second uh, variable, which I think is very important, is accountability. Have you, are you truly, truly accountable for the breakdown of your marriage? This is where people get confused. An event can happen that I didn't cause. For example, I was robbed. Um, maybe, I was, maybe I was attacked. Um, maybe my spouse cheated on me. Those are events that maybe I didn't have direct um, or any control over them happening to me. However, I'm 100% accountable to how I react to that event. That's what I'm talking about. The difference between a victim and being accountable. And accountable is I, I am accountable to the outcome of my marriage. I chose that person, I engaged in that person, I was married to that person for X number of years and I'm accountable. So even if they had an affair or something, it's not that you're to blame for that, but you need to use accountability language around how you react to that. The other area is clear boundaries. Chemistry is a very interesting thing. Do you know that we're equally attracted to what's good for us as what's not good for us? I'll take myself for example, I love chocolate. And so when I see chocolate, I do get all warm and fuzzy inside and it's not good for me, I know that. 
I still sometimes eat it, of course. Um, it's like that with people. We're actually, if you put yourself in a room and you look at somebody and that person is, wow, I'm so attracted to that person, just beware that that may be a that person who's equally good for you as equally bad for you. So make sure that you have established the boundaries of where you begin and end and when another person begins and ends. And if you've come from any kind of relationship where there's addictions or anything like that, you need to do some extra work on that for sure. The other area is your offer list. I love this. So of course, as we're thinking about getting into dating again and looking for Mr. or Ms. Right, um, we come up with a list and whether it's a list we've written down or it's a list we have in our head or a list we've talked about with our friends, there's a list. You know what that list is. And so what I'm going to encourage you to do is make a list of what is what you have to offer. And a list that says, this is what I have to offer. And then maybe share it with a few friends to make sure that they're telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, so that uh, they can tell you whether your list is real. So make sure they match up. Uh, if you're an avid outdoors person who loves minus 40, uh, you don't want to be with somebody who likes to spend all their time on the beach. Uh, just sort of have fun with it, but make your offer list. The last uh, part of the equation, super important, is old tapes. If you're still playing old tapes in your mind's eye, if you're going through your marriage and what if and what if and I wish and oh, if only I had, you need to get rid of those. Put them in the garbage, they belong in the garbage. If you're still playing old tapes, you're not ready for love. However, if you're not playing old tapes and you're not thinking about it or talking about it on a regular basis, then maybe you are. So that is the equation for are you ready for love? Time plus accountability plus clear boundaries plus your offer list minus the old tapes equals potentially ready for love.